Welcome to the Highway Tech Show, where we focus on insights and strategies and solve some of the top challenges in highway tech, reconstruction, and accidents with trucks, bikes, motorcycles, and more. Let's get started with the show. John Grindy here. And John Steiner here. Uh, we are the hosts of Highway Tech. We talk with uh, top leaders of OEMs, commercial fleets, legal, and much, much more. Uh, today, we're going to flip the script. What we're talking about is J John Grindy and I hosting guests and doing interviews. But today, we want to introduce Dr. Jeremy Weiss of Rice 25, who has conducted thousands and thousands of these interviews with very successful business leaders in a, a variety of industries. And he's here to interview us. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeremy Weiss. Thank you both for having me. And it's always a pleasure to talk with Grindy and Steiner because you guys are really the experts in the industry. And we're going to find out more about Mechanica, you know, scientific services, what you do. And before we dive into this, and you're going to tell me some cool stories about how you met and the inception of the company. This episode is brought to you by Mechanica Corp. And at Mechanica Corp, what they do is they provide engineering and scientific analysis uh, and the services to many different industries. So legal, automotive, commercial truck and bus, manufacturing, uh, transportation, and more. What I like to say to both of you is if it has wheels, if it rolls down the highway, or I guess a golf course, that you have their back, right? And anything from golf carts to passenger vehicles to heavy truck and bus. And I know you have these, and I could see, if anyone's watching the video, you see this like drone-like thing over the side of Grindy's shoulder, they utilize cutting edge tools, technologies, and methodologies to perform accident reconstruction. What I picture is like just the worst accidents out there and being able to recreate them. And you help do that and analyze the crashes and communicate the analysis so it's clear and quick to your clients. And I know you've worked with some of the biggest transportation companies out there. Everyone has heard of these companies. Um, but what you do is you specialize in this highway vehicle safety research and testing collision analysis and expert testimony and, um, and event data recorders. And whenever I hear black box data, I think of you guys. Okay. So if you have questions, go to mechanicacorp.com, learn more, check out more, email them. So I want to start with both of you is how did you first meet? Well, I think it's an interesting, it kind of goes back and we always joke, uh, <laughs> that I arrested John when I was actually in my former life of a uh, California highway patrolman. I, I but, usually say, uh, after about the fourth arrest, uh, yeah. we became good friends, but that, that, that's in the back of the vehicle, you did that, that for 24 years, Grindy, right? Yes sir. yes, sir. 24 years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I met him when I was, uh, I think you had just started with, uh, another firm in long beach mm -hmm. and he was, he, some of his clients were coming in and they, they were involved in a crash and I was doing the investigation on the crash with our, uh, you know, CHP's, uh, what they call the multidisciplinary accident investigation team or the mate team. And, um, when I was working there, he had come up to the scene and said, Hey, can I get on scene and take some photos and I'll stay out of your way. And, and at that point we started to realize trucks have data recorders. Right. So we're like, wait, can you get data off of that vehicle that we're there? Somehow and it came up. And I, I remember just by pure dumb luck running into you at the end of an off ramp for, for one of the on ramp yeah. or, 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 or on ramp for the 710 freeway. And, and somehow data came up, but you mentioned it of like, and by the way, we're going to be pulling all the data off. We're going to the dealership. Ship we're pulling pull all, all the, the data, data off, off yeah. your client's truck. And it was like, uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we've worked together ever since. That must have been in, I'm going to guess, that was 2002. Early 2000. Yeah, early 2000. Yeah. And then after, as I approached retirement, and, and that was, that's how the relationship built. And then as, as they developed, we, you know, I'd see John at different, different racks that we were investigating, and he'd ask to get in and, and we'd always go, great, sure, we'll let you get the data. If you share it with us, we'll let you on the scene. Uh, so he got access into, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty big scenes that, that he was, nobody else was able to get into. 
Um, and from that point, we kind of developed a friendship. And, and as I was closing towards my retirement, he's like, hey, you got you to gotta come work with us. You got to come work with us because, you know, we need a guy like you that can, knows what he's doing and kind of does this stuff on the outside. So um, I retired at, uh, you know, after 24 years. And uh, I had 10, 10, almost 11 years in full time in the, in the mate unit. Um, that's all I did exclusively towards the end of my career and then just transitioned to this. And, and that's how we first met. And that's how we, that's how I first jumped out and retired from the department and started working with John. What you're doing now, Grindy, does not look like retirement to me. Like what I visualize as retirement. <laughs> yeah, most, most people go, you're retired. You're working harder now. Than you <laughs> yeah, it, it was, uh, it's an interesting evolution as we were in a different company. Uh, John had left and I had seen, uh, you know, some stuff happen that, that, and I thought, you know what, it's time for me to go to. And I, I called him and we sat down and we decided, okay, we're going to open up Mechanica, uh, you know, and it's going to be scary as all get out. And, uh, you know, anybody who's opened a business knows that you're like, I, I think I might be able to make a little bit of money some, at some point in time in the near future, you hope. Um, you know, it felt like more was flowing out of my pocket every day. Um, you know, we were, we had our wives running around doing stuff. Yeah. I remember my wife taking a trip down to, uh, it was Torrance. It was a, we had to go get some equipment in Torrance. I said, yeah, take two credit cards and go down to this place and buy this, you know, $50,000 piece. And she's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. There's two credit cards. You're going to, you're, like, you're going to be divorced in retirement with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So, but the, you know, she did it. She was a trooper. She did it, hung in there and uh, fast forward. What are we seven years now? Seven years. We're on seven years. Yeah. That we've been doing this and we're doing very well. We got 24 people, 25 people. Yeah. Think, we started out with you and I plus Kathy. Kathy yeah. Kathy's been uh, there since the inception. Since, and, and, and uh, I worked with Kathy for seven years before. And, um, we, uh, um, had a, uh, an incredible start, you know, Mechanica was, was born literally over about four business days. Uh, it was, it was not planned. <laughs> and I remember going to Ikea with Grindy and uh, getting our first desk because when we first started, we literally were working on the tailgates of one of our Ram trucks. Yeah. Um, That's appropriate prepared. for what you do. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> He yeah. had one of the harnesses set up across the tr back bed of the truck, and we were doing an image of, of a, a modules on the back bed of the truck because we didn't have a table to put it on. Right. And that was my desk. Yeah. <laughs> I love those stories. You know, I want to hear about the evolution of the business. What were the services you started with offering and then now? And I also want to hear about the evolution of the team because, Steiner, you mentioned you, you basically, you guys have really longstanding careers. And then you decide to start this company and you kind of put together this dream team of the people that you had met over the past few decades. And so it started with, with the two of you and Kathy. Talk about the team now. Go ahead. They're, yeah, it's, it's they're incredible. an incredible team. We are so blessed that to have found the people that we have. Um, one thing that's key to that is Grindy and I recognized pretty early on, we did not want to recreate where we were coming from. Other firms, um, the firms, we wanted to run a, a business, a small business and have a team and have an incredible team with an incredible culture here so that the people we find that are passionate about what they do, you know, the dedication to highway safety in the form of, you know, investigating, analyzing, reconstructing crashes. Um, they can do that and not worry about other stupid things in a bad work culture. We are so proud of our work culture here. And, and <laughs> what I had yeah, 24, 24, 24 people, 24 now. people. Now we have an office location in Elk Grove, we have one in San Diego, our headquarters here in Oxnard, where we're at, uh, at on this video. And uh, we also have uh, expanded into uh, Mexico. Uh, John is a dual citizen, so we're able to do business down in Mexico. And we're starting to talk to the federales uh, down there about their processes and how they're doing things. 
nice. and uh, some other companies down in Mexico because that market is completely changing. They're changing their rules, the way they're doing their uh, court uh, trials and testimony. Uh, so there's a, a lot, lot of, of opportunities for us down yeah. there. We have one of our employees, is, uh, he's basically a consultant right now, but he is in Mexico. He used to work up here and then went back to Mexico because uh, he's a Mexican citizen. And he's kind of handling some of that stuff, mm -hmm. dealing with the, the, the training portion and right. how do we get to become you know, leaders in the industry down there as it right. is just opening up yeah. to uh, highway safety. Yeah. And looking at highway safety down there so it's pretty it's pretty pretty awesome actually will you talk about some of the if you don't want to name names or anything but like some of the experts because you sought out these specific probably expertises of your team like who are some of the the people or the expertise that you have as part of the team well we're, one of the first ads and it was him on a cold call uh we were going through looking for someone that could handle some of our media. We needed somebody that could do, you know, not only just CAD drawings, but understood the Photoshop and how these things worked and, uh, the, and the, all the higher end stuff, the uh, uh, photo modeler. Mm -hmm. uh, he uses Synthize to do all this analysis with videos. He also uses uh, input ace. Pix 4D, Input Ace. Yeah. So he had all this experience. We cold called him. Off of LinkedIn. Off of LinkedIn. He lived in Simi Valley, and at the time, he was working in Tulare, which is, you know, three hours north of here. And so he was driving up on Mondays, spending the week up there, and driving back on Fridays. And we said, hey, would you like a job, like, in, you know, uh, <laughs> like, down the street from your house, maybe? He almost thought it was spam. Yeah, he thought it was a he spam. Thought my, my, my LinkedIn message to him was, one of the, was a spammy message, and then he decided to give it a call. And... Um, he, um, <clears throat> uh, we talked and he, yeah. he's now become our group manager for forensic media services and, um, has, uh, uh, just grown the department. We're also really excited. We're folding in a forensic animator, uh, David Gifford, um, you know, and on the accident reconstruction side, we have John Isbister who is many years experience with also same background same as background. John Grindy in Highway California Patrol. Highway Patrol mate team border division. And then we have the recent addition of uh, David Darren, uh, who has three decades of crash reconstruction experience. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I would love to hear you talk about the culture a little bit. What are some things that you do to help with culture? Cause that was a big, I get that sense from talking to both of you. That's like such a, a big, a pride, a, a piece of pride to have a place that you love to work with, especially Grindy's like, I'm retired. I don't want to go to a place that I don't, you know, I don't like going to, or that the other people don't like going to. What did you do to make sure that the culture is sound and everyone loves coming to work and they can work on their craft? Well, I, I personally, I think we started this when, and, we were what three or three months in and a couple of the clients said we want you to come out into vegas there's a big law there was a law uh seminar i guess for legal the legal departments we're, we're like how the hell are we going to pay for this you know to start with we had nothing we were, mm -hmm. were just getting started and so we had the insane idea to go with the orange we had some other it was kind of funny. The original, the origin sign was a little different, you know, when we started, but we said, Hey, let's brand the orange. You have to brand. It's like Nike, right? Everybody knows what the swoosh is. Apple. You don't even have to mention Apple. You just see the Apple, and you know what it is. So we figured, Hey, we got to brand something. John through his contact, uh, it was a flight and I'll let him explain it a little bit more in detail, but, uh, we met our, our, our web designer who came up with this logo. And then we just went with the orange and orange stuck. So we wore orange shirts and that's all he kept saying is Mechanica. Hey, it's Mechanica. You know, it, 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 we were like being branded at this, at all these functions because we were running around and, and still want, but we look, I look like a, a damn pumpkin walking around. We should have worn them for this, whatever. We should have broke out yeah. the orange shirts. <laughs> My orange shirt's getting a little dirty because I've worn it a couple times in inspections, but I got to get a new orange shirt. But yeah, we, we branded out the orange and it's kind of nice. We've kept it on in, in the logo. Um, 
and, and it's worked out. But it's very interesting that, that we kind of started that way and have evolved uh, and developed into where we're at. Part of the culture, though, is one of the things we didn't want to do. We know what we didn't want to do, but we didn't know what we wanted to do. What did so you want to do? Down how to build it. Yeah. What do we build? How, yeah. So we sat down, made some contacts uh, that John had with through your dad had uh, through his years of work. Yep. And we started talking to people that have built businesses that have been in business for a long time. How do we do this? How do we build right. this right. business? And the first thing they did was all of them said the same thing. Business plan. Got to have an idea. Where are yeah. you going? What are you doing? Yeah. And so we sat down and literally uh, over a weekend wrote our business plan back and forth and just going back and forth over it and uh, trudged it out. And we've since, I think we've revamped it a couple of times, but you know, it's still, it's an evolutionary Mm -hmm. process, right? So each time we do it, you know, Hey, what's our next set of goals? What's our next uh, series of. So Steiner, I'd love to hear what did you, what advice did your dad give you both? Do you remember? (laughs) So, so my dad, when we started this was, was retired, had retired and um, he, he's been a pretty important guiding light for me and, and, and a great sounding board for us. He, he, he spent 40 years in the banking industry. So much different industry, but look, business is business, whether, I mean, seriously, um, you have a serious business of, of selling tacos and you can make a lot of money doing that, or you do what we do, or you're in finance and banking in the end, the, the, the common denominator, well, there's a lot, but one of the most difficult ones to lead, I don't want to say manage, but to lead and to grow is the people, the team. And, and, and having a system of one, you got to have a good culture to uh, a, to attract A plus talent, mm-hmm. right? You, you got you, you to gotta have a shiny bus. Um, that's how one of our, our, our advisors describes it. Um, and so we have, we, we, we have a, uh, a pre-screening program, um, through a guy that was actually my dad's mentor. Um, and his name is Larry Scherzer and Scherzer International. Um, and then we have John Losey, who's our outside leadership coach who kind of helped us build the culture build out we actually have a playbook and it's our it's our rule book of like why we do things and how do we make decisions and and these are all things that kind of came from you know the advice we were getting from my dad who who spent you know 40 years in much much bigger organizations including you know a fortune five company um you know and it it was incredible input for us yeah i want to you know I think another episode that would be great that I want you guys to consider is, and Grindy, you mentioned this, is how the rules have changed. I'd really be interested to hear from your guys' career and your standpoint over several decades, what has changed in the rules. So if you find that interesting, I'm going to just put that plant, that seed. And so maybe everyone listen to another episode where they'll talk about that, but I'd love for you to walk me through an example and walk people through an example. Okay. You don't have to name names. You have to name companies, but just so people can visualize what you actually do. So what I'm picturing is a truck's going down, crashes into a car. There are maybe several injuries, maybe someone died and there's a, it's, it's not a pretty sight. Mm -hmm. Who's calling you? Like what type of person is calling you? Companies calling you. And then what do you do next? Well, it's typically attorneys um, yeah. calling that that are working at the direction of of a commercial enterprise that's running a a commercial you know a, a fleet of trucks fleet. or or vans or or whatever it may be and um, um, there there is an interest um, and something we specialize in is is in the rapid response to these um, catastrophes so that we can get an independent collection of physical evidence where we're going out documenting and measuring, um, you know, tire marks, the fluid stains, you know, the, the, we can measure independently the, the paint marks put down by law enforcement, you know, around here, most likely CHP or other law enforcement agencies. And we basically 
gather all that stuff from the scene, go to the vehicles, especially the client's vehicle, which these days are pretty advanced now. Uh, you know, and I think everybody understands this. You get in your car and there are like so many bells and whistles and things that you, you have cameras, you have radio heads, you have all this information going into the system that the industry is talking about increasing the voltage. You know, you see a normal 12 volt battery, right? Is in your car. Trucks have what? 24, 36, Some, 24, yeah, 24 Some volt 12. system yeah. because of the amount of electronics they got to run. That's yeah. the, what there's too much electronics and it's draining the system. Right. The alternators now are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and they handle more amperage right. because of the load of all this electronic stuff. And, you know, I mean, we're so used to just plugging in everything right. anyways that you, you go down the road, you plug your right. phone in, you plug no. your iPad we're in. We're sucking you, all the energy all that out of that battery. Coming off of the car. Well, the car has tons of data yeah. on it. And everybody realizes now these cars have black boxes. They have data. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked, you know, I mean, and I, I got to love CSI. It's, it's, a, it's a great show, but people still think you can just walk in, unplug the car, and you get a complete video of the whole crap. <laughs> And, and it, you're done in an hour, and that's not real life. No. It takes months to reconstruct a crash. It doesn't happen yeah. overnight. Yeah. You know, even with video, it takes months because you yeah. have to analyze the video. You have to determine where things are in relation to that video. Is it a convex mirror? We've had that issue before where you have the kind of a, a, a convex mirror effect where you have that look is funky, but it looks straight, but it's not because the camera angles it out and you have to know these values. And, and that's where right. our media department comes in and yeah. all the experience with that, dealing with that kind of thing to help us out with the right. reconstruction. So as these things evolve. So there's a crash. You get called by an attorney. How quickly do you have to be out on the site? It, it, it's driven by how far it is. So Typically, we're covering California and Nevada for Rapids and Arizona. Yeah, gotcha. And we can be there in, in six hours. Okay. You know, it, it's driven by distance, right? It could be yeah. six hours. It might Great. be where it's just down the, the but road. But they want there. you coming like now, like because, yeah. right? right? Okay. They, because like fluids, you know, like we need you to do all this. So you go out there and what are you doing on the scene? You mentioned a few things. So, so, so a couple of things you'll see over, over Grindy's shoulder. Okay. Um, um, the, we document scenes by, by drone technology and also over um, my shoulder, you can see there's a, a, a gizmo on a tripod and we're taking 3D measurements. So we want to memorialize what's out there. Uh, along with these, these very high-end um, devices, we're also taking um, very high quality digital photographs hundreds of them at the scene. And then we also drive through the scene to capture video so that it's all memorialized because you're, you're, you were kind of touching upon um, something really important. As soon as the crash is cleared and the highway is open again, all of that physical evidence starts disappearing and pretty quickly. Um, and and we, it's very important to, to get that stuff documented. So, so that and the vehicles, the data off the vehicles, those are the, the key things. And then sometimes the client will ask, well, we need a preliminary or, you know, just let's just sit on it for now. Kind of, there's just so many scenarios, right. uh, but yeah. No, that's, it's really interesting. I, I you know, so Grindy, you are saying like, you can't like CSI this and like, okay, cool. We got it like the next day. So now they call you to the scene. You gather all this data with all the technical devices that you have. Right. Now what? What you do you do next? <laughs> you, you hit enhance. You hit enhance. You can push just the keep enhance going button. And you read it. You see the guy's face. No, yeah. It's, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I think at some point we will get to, to that point. You know, Not I, there I, yet. I'm old enough where I remember, you know, everybody thought we were going to have George Jetson's flying car by now. So, you know, it's a, it's a 2000. We were supposed to all have flying cars. They're getting there. <laughs> it's just not fast enough. But, the, the, you know, I, I digress, I say, it, but the, one of the things we do post is we come back, we offload all our camera stuff, all the equipment gets, you know, refreshed, uh, batteries recharged, because we don't know when the next thing's going to happen or mm -hmm. somebody else has, like, you know, we, we had that little short 
recess here to allow somebody to go do an inspection. So they're heading off to go do an inspection of a vehicle. Sometimes we can't get to the vehicles right away. Sometimes it has to go later, but we get back and post-processing is where all the, all the time spent. It's offloading and uploading all the photos. It's getting it, you know, organizing them into kind of groups because you, if you just take, you know, I, I can tell you, I just did this. I had 26 gigs of photos. You know, that's a lot of photos. And now you got to organize all tons of photos. Yeah. yeah. So you got to organize them all into some kind of reasonable grouping. Meaningful to make grouping. Set, yeah. it, make an understanding of what you're, what, so when, when the attorney gets it, they don't have just thousands of photos yeah. that they're going, why do I have 1500 photos of these things? And I have no idea what they're, where anything is. Like, can you organize it for me? So that's why we do that. It's to, it's to simplify the organization. If they want to look at something specific. You know, they can go right to that folder and then find those photos that, that are related to it. Uh, then we process and start processing all of the drone footage, the, the feral footage, uh, you know, put that all together, draw a preliminary drawing. So we have an idea of this is the roadway environment and this is what we have. And, and then we do things like when this, the, the report gets issued, we take the report from the police and we add where they say things were. You know, versus where we saw things. So sometimes you'd be surprised. It's pretty close. Not always. Some don't do a real good job of drawing skids. Yeah. Uh, they take two points instead of, you know, and you see a right. big arcing curve right. skid mark. Right. And they started at the one end and they went to the other end, but they forgot all the right. stuff in the middle and they draw a straight line. And you're like, that's not what the skid right. looks like. It's clear from the photos. Right. It's curved. And so we have to re resolve. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to think I'm going to go with your guys uh, synopsis over someone eyeing it like <laughs> drone and right. 26 gigs of photos. Right. Uh, and and yeah. just one thing to add, you know, the law enforcement officers out there have a lot of things to do, right? They got to help the people. Totally. Totally. Gotta, it's not their, it's not their expertise. I mean, their expertise is their expertise and right. your expertise is your expertise. Right. Yeah. You know, right. they, they, so they're dealing with helping people and clearing the road. And we come in with a laser focus on document physical evidence. And that's it's that it's a that's different a it's a different. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, for the sake of time, because I know there's a lot of details that go into all this. Um, if we fast forward the uh, when you're working with the attorneys, um, wh at what point do they need the information and then how are they using the information? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's um, it it, it the, the answers vary. So some of the more sophisticated fleets um want uh, even if there's no litigation, want want us to look at the data and provide answers on what's going on. You know, why did this happen? Why why did our what in our safety systems didn't work to 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 that's supposed to mitigate this stuff, and how can we improve? Um, so, so, you know, there's that level of analysis. There's analysis that, that, you know, um, some other clients just want to have an idea of, you know, <laughs> why did this happen? Yeah. There's others that just say, just, just sit on it. There, there's a variety. And then, then there's the ones that are tied to either criminal or civil litigation, which are then, you know, that, that work is tied to deadlines and, um, you know, I, specific milestones in that legal process. That that that, will, that that drives the work. There's a number. Yeah, I can see there's a number of scenarios there. Let's assume, okay, people want to, the companies want to improve, know what want, you know, know what happens so they can avoid it in the future. I could totally see that. Um, and then maybe there's some that go to um, civil or some kind of litigation. In that situation, do do the attorneys come in and present the data that you give them? Or do you actually have to go, do any of your team have to go in and um, report on that? Or does the data speak for itself? Well, I, I, well the, I, I guess it depends on what we're doing on the case. Well, Sometimes we're just data. We deal with, right. they just want the data. Got it. Other times we're doing the accident, the reconstruction of the crash. So what happened? They want to know mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. everybody wants to know why. That's the biggest question in, in my entire career. Why did this happen? And then you have to explain how it happened mm -hmm. and why it happened. And that's the, we're answering the why question to a lot of people mm -hmm. and the what question, because they're mm -hmm. like, well, what if this happened? Then would that change anything? 
and did something else fail or what, what's going on with this crash? So we reconstruct the crash to determine things like speeds. Uh, you know, it, was it, you know, a typical intersection crash where somebody was making a left turn. Did somebody run a red light? Mm -hmm. Did somebody not run a red light? Those are big questions that come right. up all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially at intersections, because if you have two parties, one, you know, one saying I had a green, the other one says, no, I had the green. Who's got the green? You know, I mean, you really have to do some analysis and the attorneys want to know. And sometimes the attorneys deal with the insurance carriers. So the carriers need that information as well. So they're doing reports. So as we go through each stage, kind of a staging these things as we build more and more information up and, and they, we do an inspection. They, then we contact the attorney. We let the attorney know this is what we did. This is what we found out. And they go, okay, they write something and they send it to the carrier. So the carrier has that information. So they, they can make the determination on, do we just pay this out? Do we not sell? And they make those, they mitigate the cost of this whole of, uh, right. event, you know, and, from litigation aspects. And, so. and those are the big outcomes, right? What the right. attorneys use it with. It, it, it depends on, I, I guess one way you could, this, an analogy you could use is <laughs> these crashes are, 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 are like a deck of cards. You don't, you, you're just kind of dealt with what you're dealt. And some mm -hmm. cases you may have a client that's not in a good position and has some pretty ugly liability on why that crash happened. You know, <laughs> there's, you know, at some point there's not much to do other than, you know, no, they, you, you're they just know. providing the data. I mean, this is like independent is data. It like is. it is what it is. This is what we found. I mean, this is what, what it is. Like what the evidence whether says. you like it or not, like this is what the data is. Right. Yeah. And that's why people bring you in as an independent third right. party, because you're not biased. You're like, this is what happened. Right. Right. Um, Good, bad or ugly. That's we kind yeah. of, this yeah. is what, yeah. you know, what, what went down. So. The Good, bad or ugly. First of all, both of you, thank you. I'm looking forward to more episodes and the people you have on because I know some of the guests that you have on are, it's going to be a lively debate and a lively conversation. So check out more episodes of the podcast, check out mechanicacorp.com and more. I want to thank you both for having me. Thanks thank, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks for watching and listening to The Highway Tech Show. Take action with what you've gotten today. And if you want to never miss a show, make sure to go to highwaytechshow.com.